In the previous video, we understood that timing for a register includes two specific delays, setup time and TCQ. So this is the register again. It consists of a master latch, which is active low, and a slave latch, which is active high. The master latch is all the way from D to QI, and the slave latch is from QI to Q. And the question now, what is setup time? How much is it, and why does it occur? And what happens if we do not respect setup time? And the second question is, if we do respect setup time, what is TCQ? How much is it, and why does it happen? So first of all, setup time was defined as the amount of time that the input has to be stable at uh, the input port before the active edge of the clock comes. So the question is basically, how close to the edge of the clock do we allow the input to change? The answer cannot be arbitrarily clo close to the edge because it could change exactly at the edge, in which case it's difficult to know whether we want the old data or the new data to be registered. In fact, there's a finite time before the edge at which the data has to stabilize if this data is to be registered properly. So what's happening here? What's happening at the positive edge of the clock? At the positive edge of the clock, the clock changes from 0 to 1, and we want to know how long before this edge the data has to be stable. So there has to be something related to the data that happens when the active edge of the clock occurs. And if we look a little bit carefully, we will find that this something that happens is that transmission gate T1 closes as soon as the clock goes from 0 to 1. So transmission gate T1 is active on the zero phase of the clock as soon as the clock goes to 1, which means that we have encountered the active edge, the transmission gate will be off. And therefore, we have to think what has to happen before the, this transmission gate T1 shuts down. So D has to be there and stable for an, an amount of time long enough before this transmission gate shuts down. And so if we think about it, what do we want to happen in the zero phase of the clock? In the zero phase of the clock, we want the data to be latched properly in the master latch. As soon as the active edge comes and we, we go into the one phase of the clock, the master latch can no longer see the input D, and therefore QI has to have latched the proper value of D. So how is D properly latched in the master latch? If we allow D to reach QI, then we can think of it as having been properly latched. So basically, before the clock becomes 1, D has to have enough time to reach QI. And so D has to be present before the positive edge by enough time to allow this delay to occur. So basically, to begin with, T setup is going to be the delay of the inverter I1, the delay of the transmission gate T1, and the delay of the inverter I2. If we do this, then D, through this time, will be able to travel from the input node to node QI, and now it is safe to allow the clock to go to 1 and to disconnect D from the master latch. However, setup time also has to include the delay of inverter I3. So proper setup time will have to include TI3. And so we have to allow the data to stabilize not at QI, but at the output of I3. Let's call this node QX. So we have to allow the data to stabilize at the output of node QX. Why? Because if we imagine that we are in a situation where D is equal to 1 and QI is equal to initially equal to um, 0, and therefore QX is initially equal to 1, this comes through two inverters from, um, from the input D, and the feedback path is closed. This is during the zero phase of the clock. And so we are during the zero phase of the clock. We give D enough time to cross transmission gate T1, inverter I1, and inverter I2, and stabilize here. And so QI manages to update to the new value, which is 1, the value of D. However, we uh, immediately raise the clock, not giving enough time for uh, the, uh, the, va the new value of D to go through inverter I3. And so we open transmission gate T1, and there's an open circuit here, 
and we close transmission gate T2 and the feedback path is completed. So what's happening here? This node QI is now at 1 and this node QX is still at 1. This is not a sustainable state for these two inverters. They have to exit it and they will, will exit it. However, the problem is that they will take some time to exit this state, which is called a metastable state. And when they exit it, we are not sure if they will exit it with the correct value at QI or with the wrong value at QI. This depends on how, uh, how long we allowed uh, the, the signal to stabilize at QI and also on the mismatch between inverters I2 and I1. If one is stronger than the other, then it will overcome the other. In all cases, this is not a state we want to uh, connect the feedback in. Instead, we should have waited for QX to stabilize at zero and thus, when we connect the positive feedback, this is a stable state with the output of inverter 2 at 0 and the output of inverter 1 at 1. And so, setup time properly should include the delay of the feedback inverter I2, uh, I1, uh, I3, as well as the delay of the feedforward inverter I2. And so, this is what setup time is. Again, let's revise what setup time is, why it occurs, and why we have to respect it. Setup time is about allowing enough time for data to be latched properly in the master latch before the master latch becomes opaque. So if we do not respect setup time, this means that we did not allow D to reach QX. Uh, as long as D does not reach QX, we have no idea which state QI is going to settle at. It's important to understand that the problem with not letting the data settled properly in the master latch is not that we would latch the wrong value of QI. Perhaps in this feedback situation, perhaps it will settle at the correct value of QI. The problem is it will take longer than we expected for it to reach the correct value. And taking longer to reach the correct value is as good or as bad, honestly, as uh, reaching the, the uh, incorrect value. So this is what setup time is. If we do not respect setup time, if we change D closer to the active edge uh, than setup time, then what we have done is something called a setup time violation. So um, if we do respect setup time, after the active edge of the clock occurs, after the positive edge occurs, how long does it take for Q to make an appearance at the output? So basically, the D that we did latch in the master latch, how long does it take for this D to appear at Q. And, you know, the um, direct way of thinking about it is to think that data is now at QI. It will take TI4 plus T transmission gate 3 plus TI5 to reach Q. Because in the one phase of the clock, transmission gate 3 is on and the slave latch is transparent. However, um, I mean, this is a good way to think about it, but the data when the active edge comes is not at QI. We have already allowed enough time for the data to reach QX, so we can assume that in parallel, the data has also traveled through I4 and is ready at the input of transmission gate 3. And so the only modification we need to do to this is that the delay of inverter 4 is not included in TCQ. So TCQ is T transmission gate 3 plus TI5. And so again, what's happening here is that if we change the data T setup or more before the active edge of the clock, that this means that the data is properly latched in the master latch. And so when the active edge occurs, this will allow us to see the output properly after TCQ of the active edge coming. And there is one question that still remains here, which is why did we not allow enough time for the data to stabilize in the slave latch before we said the TCQ uh, is done. In other words, when we calculated T setup, we also included the delay of inverter I3 in setup time delay, but we did not include the delay of I6 in TCQ. We only considered TCQ traveling through T transmission gate 3 and T inverter 5. Why did we not also include the delay of inverter 6? That's the question. So why is this not happening? And the answer has to do with the definition of T setup and TCQ. T setup is the amount of time we have to uh, have the input ready before the active edge of the clock. Uh, this all has to do with transmission gate T1 shutting down 
and disconnecting D from the master latch. And so we have to be sure that we have latched the value properly. And to do that, we have to allow the value to go through the feedback path. However, TCQ is defined as the amount of time that, the, uh, that it takes for the output to appear. And the output is the output of inverter 5. So that's the definition. This is the minimum amount of time we have to wait before we can take a proper output at the node Q. We don't actually have to wait for the data to stabilize in the feedback path before Q is correct. But, I mean, it's a legitimate concern to think about what happens if the, uh, if the, uh, if the clock goes down to zero. When the clock goes down to zero, T transmission, the transmission gate T3 is off and transmission gate T4 is on. And so during the one phase of the clock, it is legitimate to say that we have to allow enough time for Q to go through T tra transmission gate 3, inverter 5, and inverter 6. We have to allow it to stabilize here before the active edge, uh, before the uh, positive uh, phase of the clock ends. But that's not TCQ. That's the amount of time we have to spend in the one phase of the clock. When we look at pipelines, we will find that we will spend way more time than that in uh, either phase of the clock. And so this will safely be taken care of and will not be an issue uh, to begin with.